You're listening to the Confidence Coach Podcast, episode 93, understanding yourself on a deeper level. Today, I want to talk about the self your self. And there's a few things that I want to talk about, including self-awareness, self-esteem, self-worth, and self-concept and how each play a role in your life. I am a firm believer in continuing education. You guys hear me say all the time, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so I feel like you have to constantly be pushing yourself, creating these aha moments, and really putting yourself out there to, to better understand not only yourself, but how you can impact others too. So when you have a better understanding of the self, you can help support your community, your family, your kids, your business, because you are able to recognize your your limiting beliefs or any other underlying issues or challenges that may be holding you back from this quote best life. You know, you hear everybody say, "Oh, living my best life." Okay? Which is it which is great, you know, but I feel like it is oh, so overused. But anyways, let's get back to self-awareness. That's where I want to start. And so self-awareness is literally how it sounds, bringing awareness to the self. But there's both a positive self-awareness and a negative self-awareness. And you are the dictator of this. Like you get to determine whether you have a positive self-awareness or a negative self-awareness. And so a lot of times these things end up in I am statements. You know, I am a mom. I am a wife. I am a business owner. I am a woman. I am mad. I am angry. It's that how you define yourself, whether that be how you're feeling or what you think you are. Okay. And so let me ask you this. Are you confident in who you are right now? Like when you think of yourself and you say, I am fill in the blank. Are you confident with that? Like, does that feel good to you? And if the answer is no, I'm going to challenge you to bring more awareness to that and change your story. You are the creator of your reality. You are the one who can bring more self-awareness to how it is that you think, act, and feel about yourself. And a lot of times when we have these I am statements, we're really saying what we do versus who we are. So a lot of times when you ask somebody like, you know, who are you? They'll say what they do. They're like, oh, I'm a mom, which is a role. I'm a wife, which is a role. I'm a business owner, which is a role. Okay, great. Those are things that you do. But who are you? Who are you on a deeper level? And this is where that self-awareness really starts to kick in because who are you behind the mask? Who are you behind the labels? And a lot of times people do not know how to answer this. They don't. Okay. So at your core, who are you? A lot of times we have one one world that's like happening around us and then we have one world that's happening inside of us. And those two worlds are very, very, very different. Okay, a lot of times we will create like an internal response to an external problem. So by somebody asking a question, we internalize, we have that internal dialogue that may or may not be accurate or true or a valid reflection of what is going on outside of us. Okay. So for example, like you, you can't control the weather, (laughs) you can't control society, you can't control other people, you can't control what happens in the world. All right. But you are responsible. You are 100% responsible for how you think, act, and feel about yourself and any other situation. And when you can understand that on a deeper level, that's when you start to increase your self-awareness. You know, if you're triggered by something, recognizing that it's a trigger instead of spiraling into that trigger. So for example, like if somebody says something to you that pisses you off, recognizing that, oh, 
I am a human having a human experience. Why am I having this experience right now? Versus, oh, well, fuck that person. I can't believe they said that to me and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to stand my ground. Okay, so the self-awareness part is understanding that you are a human having an emotional human experience and that it's okay to feel that and then to figure out the deeper understanding as to why you feel that way. I know this might sound just kind of like, whoa, way over the head, but I promise you that this is something that, you know, I help I help others with. I help bring awareness to the thoughts and actions that they have regarding a situation or regarding an experience and breaking it down and understanding why they have that reaction, why they have that trigger so that they can kind of remove that negative reaction and replace it with a positive one. So you can become proactive versus reactive because when you're reactive, you start to spiral and you start to let outside, outside experiences control your your response control your emotional body okay and so the next thing i want to talk about is self esteem and this is how you feel about yourself based on the beliefs of who you are as a person and again you can have a high self esteem you can have a low self esteem but nobody can change your beliefs of who you are except for you, okay? You can't like go to the doctor and be like, hi, can you give me some medicine, you know, medicine for self-esteem? No, while they can give you medicine to, and I mean, who knows? I'm not a doctor, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know any doctors who can give you a magic pill that makes you feel beautiful, that makes you feel worthy, that makes you feel successful. I don't know any magic pills like that. I know doctors can make you feel happy, they can make you feel positive, they can make you feel energetic, but I don't know any who can say, you're, you're no longer fat because I gave you this pill. Or you no longer feel skinny because I gave you this pill. Or you no longer feel X, Y, and Z. Okay, so your self-esteem is how you feel about yourself based on who you think you are as a person. You know, and this self-esteem can have a lot to do with history too. So does self-worth, which I'll get to that in a minute. But if you have been bullied throughout your life, if people were like, oh, you're ugly, you're fat, you're gross, you're too skinny, you're too pimply, you're too this, you're too that, you're too emotional, you're too talkative, you're too angry, whatever, you're too something, those, those interactions with other people, those, those words hurt and they dictate how we feel about ourselves as a human and it really takes a toll on our self-esteem. And so one of the other things that you can do is take a deep dive and ask yourself, is this true? Is this ultimately true? And I'm going to tell you 99.9% of the times the answer is no. So if you're somebody who's overweight, can you do something about that? Yes. Yes, you can. You can find ways to increase your self-esteem but nobody is going to be able to do this for you. It is up to you to change how you think, act, and feel about yourself. And I think this is where a lot of people are like, well, I wish I had motivation to do this, or I wish I felt that way, or I wish I felt that way. You guys, until you start doing the deep dive, until you start doing the work, your self-esteem is not going to just show up one day. You're not just going to wake up and feel like, man, I feel really great about myself today. I don't care that anybody calls me this or calls me that. There's work to do. You have to uncover those stories and and prove to yourself on a deeper level that they are not ultimately true and that you are the creator of your reality again, okay? And that no matter what anybody thinks, acts, says, or does to you or about you, it is how you perceive yourself that is going to enhance or increase your self-esteem, okay? I can tell you you're beautiful 18 million times, but until you feel it, you will not believe it. You will not believe it. I could say it until I'm blue in the face. I can say it. I can beat my head against the wall. I can physically hurt myself, but you will still not feel beautiful until you are ready to do the work and figure out how you can feel beautiful. It is up to you to change how you think, act, and feel about yourself. That's it. That is it. You are in control. 
Okay, and so the next thing I want to talk about is self-worth. And this is the value, the value that we place on ourselves. This is where you start to define your your personality and 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 what you what you think you are worth as a person. And a lot of times we'll say, well, I'm not worthy of that friendship. I'm not worthy of that. Or I'm not worthy of that person's time. But those, why do you think that way? Why? Why are you thinking that way? So the value that you place on yourself. I'm going to say these are words like, you know, like I'm a passionate person. I'm a caring person. I'm a creative person. I'm a loving person. Like I'm not perfect. I'm totally honest. I'm blunt. I'm like, these are things that I know that I am, but at my core, I know that I am worthy. I am. And the, the ultimate worthiness is worthy of love. That's what this all comes down to. When you feel worthy of love, your self-worth increases. You don't have, you know, worthy of belonging is another. Like a lot of times people are like, well, I'm not worthy. I don't belong. I don't, I'm not this. I'm not that. And I want you to focus on all that you are. All that you are, not all that you are not. So identify traits that would make you a worthy person. You have to find that inner worthiness. I am worthy of time. I am worthy of money. I am worthy of energy. I am worthy of being here on this planet. Your self-worth is, oh, this is just such a hard topic because a lot of times on a deeper level, we just don't feel worthy. You know, we can look confident. We can look like we got our shit together. But deep down, our self-worth really, really dictates how we show up in the world. This is where that, that fear of failure kicks in. That's where we start to feel like, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. What if I fail? What if this happens? What if that happens? And on a deeper level, it's because we don't feel worthy of achieving those hopes, goals, dreams, whatever it looks like. I know this because I didn't feel worthy of a long time or worthy for a long time. Hell, there's even sometimes I wake up and I'm like, who am I and what am I doing? Like, how, <laughs> how am I here? How am I alive? And I know that sounds pretty crazy, but it's true. I'm just trying to be honest. Like, not every day is rainbows and butterflies. And I fucking hate those people who are just, hate is a very strong word. I take that back. I really dislike those people who just show their highlight reel all the time. Like, oh, yep, yeah, everything's magical. Everything's great. Blah, blah, blah. And while you can have like several great days in a row, which is perfect, that's awesome. But you still have those underlying beliefs. So like anytime I launch something or anytime I try something new, I'm like, who am I to do this? Why? Who said that I'm worthy of this? You know, and then those stories play in my head that I'm not worthy, that nobody's going to waste their time on me. Nobody's going to waste their money on me. And the story that always plays on repeat, and I know it's not true on a deeper level, but you guys, it's really hard to quiet those demons. And the one that always comes up for me is you're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit, Sasha. Nobody cares. That's the thing that plays on repeat in my head day in and day out. And I have to shut it up every day. I have to shut it up. And I do that by taking action and showing it that I am worthy and that I can do these things. And that I'm not going to let these limiting beliefs or my lack of self-worth slow me down. And each time I conquer a step, it, it increases my self-worth. You know, like in the beginning, it was fucking terrifying, terrifying. I would always question like, who am I? What, why am I here? Why am I doing this? But now I know that I am worthy. I know that I am worth people's time. I am worth their energy and I am definitely worth their fucking money. I am. I know it. But those stories are still there. And they have to constantly, constantly work on them because those demons, I'm telling you, as soon as you put your guard down and fall into that rabbit hole, they're going to grab hold of you and, and it happens guys, it happens. And this is where it's so crucial to have a support team or a coach or, you know, somebody to help hold you accountable and pull you out of that deep, dark hole before you just keep falling and hit that rock bottom again, because damn, it is so hard to climb back up from rock bottom. 
you know, and, and my rock bottom could have been a hell of a lot worse. It could have been, you know, I, <laughs> I was fortunate I didn't, you know, live on the streets or there's just tons of things that could have happened. But each and every day I show up to prove to myself that I am worthy of these things because there is a bigger picture here, guys. I am expanding my family. You know, I am, <laughs> I have people who rely on me and how can I show them that they are worthy if I don't believe it in myself, Okay, which brings me to the next thing. And that's your your idea of self-concept. And this is who are you working on becoming? What is the highest version of you? What does that person look like? That is your self-concept. This person that you are striving to become, that is the concept of thyself that you want to be. Okay. And so I want you to check yourself because a lot of times we get hung up on self-concept. We'll judge other people for the, the successes that they've had or the, the, the wins that they've had, or they have this and they have that. And we'll say negative things about those people. One of the things that comes up for me is I used to think rich people were slimy. Like I all thought anybody who had money was just a sleazeball. They ripped people off and did nothing good with money. Like that was a big story of mine, which was also a big, big money story of mine on why I was broke all the time and living paycheck to paycheck. But I'm telling you, you can't work yourself broke and help people. Like that's just not a thing. Like you can't, (laughs) you can't be poor enough to make others rich. You can't be hungry enough to feed others. You can't be skinny enough to make other people want to lose weight. Like there's just, there's no way of hating yourself into a positive. There's absolutely no way. And so when you start to really put your time, energy, and attention into those things that you want and see what stories come up. So if you're somebody who wants to be a best mom, a lot of times your your mom stories will come up and mine certainly did. I thought, you know, who am I to have kids? I'm going to be a really shitty mom. And so I wanted to be this picture perfect mom, but then I would say mean things about that picture perfect mom. I was judging the self-concept that I wanted to obtain, which no wonder I wasn't obtaining it because I had all of these limiting beliefs, this negativity surrounding that self-concept. So when you think of yourself as your highest self, what stories come up that surround that? Okay, just think about it. And there's a lot of times that you don't even have, you don't even know what stories you have until you start talking about them with other people. You know, I, I, <laughs> I didn't even really know what limiting beliefs or stories were you know, not that long ago, a few years ago. And I did not realize, you know, I've always said, you know, I'm the creator of my reality. You, you, you know, like attracts like, you can manifest whatever you want. But I didn't realize how much negativity I was manifesting because of the limiting beliefs, those stories that play in your head that you are not consciously aware of. You may be aware of them on like a subconscious level where you're like, oh man, I feel like shit or I'm not worthy. Or, but you try not to pay a whole lot of attention, but those stories are there. And until you bring those demons to the surface and stomp them out, they will continue to be there and they will continue to be underlying causes for why you are not achieving the level of success that you want to be in your life, whether that's in your, you know, your parenting, your business, your job, your money, your fitness, whatever area of life that you're working on, if you do not uncover those limiting beliefs, they will keep you stuck. And so your self-concept will be very, very skewed because you will want this ideal life, but you will also have stories surrounding that ideal life, which when you have pressure and resistance surrounding something, you're actually pushing it farther away. Think about it. If you nag, 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 the other person's like, well, fuck you. I'm not going to do any of it now. Like I'm just going to ignore you and do the exact opposite. Right. But if you release all fear and resistance or, you know, plant the seed and watch it grow, Shit happens. Shit will happen. You know, you don't plant a seed and then like pick it up, you know, out, go out there every day and dig it up to see if it's no, because eventually it will die and you will be so far from ever, you know, receiving fruit from that plant or, you know, 
reaping the benefits of that plant because you killed it. Like you killed it by poking and prodding it and fucking with it too much. Okay. So plant the seed and watch it grow and release all fear and resistance surrounding that. And you're just going to have to sit with the discomfort. I have no, I have no way of telling you or showing you how to do something without sitting with the discomfort. Like that's where you learn. That's where you grow. There's a lot of times you like We'll dive deep into these stories of self-worth, self-concept, self-esteem, self-awareness, and you're, you're like, ooh, this sucks. This is hard. I don't want to talk about this stuff. But I'm telling you, the longer you push it off, the longer you avoid it, the bigger it will grow. One of the mentors in my life would say, what resists will persist and grow bigger. I have no idea where this, like, this saying came from, but it's true. If you just avoid something, that elephant in the room is just going to grow, 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 grow until you can't avoid it anymore, anymore. And then the work's going to get even harder. So you might as well just face it now and live out your years in peace and joy and feel good about yourself, have a positive self-concept, have a positive self-worth, really feel like you are capable of doing anything and just being confident in who that person is. You know, a lot of times we have these self-worth issues, self-esteem issues, and they're not even our stories to carry. They're stories that have been placed upon us throughout society or throughout history or by our parents or by our family, by our friends. And not saying that they would do it on purpose. I mean, sometimes they do, which is fucked up, but it is what it is. It's your job to crush those stories, crush those limiting beliefs, rewrite your future. Hell, you are in freaking control. You can do this. Okay. And so this is where authenticity comes in. And authenticity comes from you being a confident individual. You are confident in who you are and who you are becoming. Okay. And you cannot help others until you get to this point. I shouldn't say cannot. You just have to be farther along in the journey than them. Okay. But you can't teach what you don't know. You can't help others if you don't know how to go through it yourself. And so this was one of the main reasons that I started my business or started really, really branching out and helping more people because I wanted to crush all of my limiting beliefs so that I could help my daughter so that I could rewrite our story for the future. And it all starts with you. And so I'm helping you do the same damn thing. And this is where I just show up as I am, who I am. I mean, hell, you've heard babies crying in the background. You've heard dogs. You've heard, I mean, this is just totally raw, unedited and how, who I am as a person. And I'm totally confident in who that person is. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. I am so far from perfect, but I am okay with that because even though I'm not perfect, I am still worthy. I am still worthy and so are you. Thank you for listening to the Confidence Coach Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to leave a five-star review and share what you loved most about this episode. You can also screenshot and share it on social media. Tag me at Sasha.Davis. And if you're looking for additional resources, head on over to SashaDavis.com. Check out ways that you can work with me and all the free resources that are available to you. Have a kick-ass day.